is the Infinity Summit Group. Truth. Passion. Success. to another Infinity Summit podcast. Today is August 2nd, 2021. I'm Jesse. Noah. Xavier. Logan. And let's see, today we're going to be talking about asset protection. Yes. Yes. Very important. Protect your assets. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to go, like, <laughs> just generally over what asset protection is? Yeah, or we can talk kind of like what, more what asset protection is and then dive deep. jump into, like, what types of asset protection there are, you know? Yeah, just basically making it so you can't get sued and your stuff taken away, right? Like, in the most general sense. Yeah. So you're protected against that, basically. Yeah, I mean, it literally says it says it in the name. It protects your ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so people can't just take away all your belongings. There you go. And it's not just suing either. It's like oh. we've got yeah. stuff in here that's with your partners where they can't take away stuff. You can't uh, take away their stuff. We got so you're not held liable for business debts. and Yes. So um, I guess there's a lot of things. Yeah. Protects you against um, spouses if things go south that way on one of them. Should we just jump into the prenup? <laughs> I mean, sure. Sure we <laughs> could jump straight there. Yeah. Uh, basically, with the prenup, if your if your wife or your husband or whatever, um, it's a contract that you make with them to where they can't take away all of your belong- belongings if you guys get a divorce. So prenups are generally signed when one one or both partners come into the relationship already having assets to protect, so that in the case of a divorce, such as like. Was it Bezos just got divorced not long ago? Yeah, made her the richest woman in the world. Yes, made his wife the richest woman in the world. But Mm -hmm. yeah, and Bill Gates. But they built their, they built their riches together, or while they were together, had Bezos come into a marriage, or if he goes into another marriage, then he can sign a prenup um, that doesn't allow his wife to take half his belongings. Does that? So you gotta keep what you had. Yes. It so if he created the wealth, like without her, because it's his business, right? Right. She didn't do anything for it. Right, but they were together while it was being built. And okay. I guess there wasn't a prenup. And any value that gets added to, like, I don't know, each contract is going to be different, but basically whatever value you have coming into the relationship cannot be touched. Okay. So, as long as you both have consensually signed that agreement. Um, and then what you earn after that while you are together uh, may or may not be liable for that split okay does that involve kids too no i mean your kids aren't going to be assets so no right um kids are just going to be whatever other civil documents you got to have sure that's all sorts of garbage this is just assets businesses things like that and you can make a verbal agreement too but that's not going to hold up in court very well so definitely if you're going to go the prenup route get an actual contract and or record it it's yeah better than nothing that. but oh yeah true true wouldn't yeah so, so five, get it five of the requirements for the prenup is your agreement must be in writing i mean unless you have like a recorded one that might hold up better but if it's like a handshake prenup that's not gonna do shit no um it must be voluntary you must have full disclosure um at the time of the contract the agreement cannot be unconscionable Meaning, like, I guess it, it would depend whose who's conscience you're talking about. <laughs> Violent things? <laughs> I, I don't know how you'd put that in a prenup. Or... Um, I don't know. So either. unconscionable is going to be, like, not right, not reasonable. I mean. So, like, they get to keep half of your stuff? <laughs> it's... I think that's really going to be up to interpretation, you know? If, yeah. But there's a general rule, I, I think, would say. I think kind of if you're – let's let's picture this. You sign a prenup. You come in with all the assets. Your spouse has none. If If you sign that prenup and then divorce and they get kicked out and have literally nothing, they turn into homeless beggars, then 
they would likely give some of your assets to your spouse at that point because okay. that agreement is unconscionable. They will have literally nothing, you know? Mm. Um, but I, I don't know. I imagine unconscionable would be, um, we'll say, debated judge by judge basis. Right. Makes sense. I guess that's um, between the two. Yeah, exactly. It. And then the, the contract must be executed between both parties, not the lawyers of the parties. So they got to be, it has to be the two people that are actually signing the prenup that sign the prenup, not just their attorneys. And then sometimes it has to be witnessed or notarized, things like that. So there's a lot of steps into it, but sounds like they are starting to become more recognized. Whereas not long ago, prenups weren't really recognized very much. I feel like that that's definitely would make sense because a lot of uh, women work now, I feel like, more than they did before. Yeah. And then a lot of the divorce rate has increased heavily mm-hmm. since then. So it would make ser- sense to sign a prenup. Yeah. W- would you guys get a prenup? Yeah. And why? Well, even if you're planning to stay with them forever, you can't really foresee the future. Just because you're, like, madly in love with that person and you plan to be together, plans don't always go out. I feel like that's going right. in with bad expectations. I know. I feel Planning like, for uh, failure. You could see uh, that, but it's go. not. It's, it's, it's a backup. Like, it's better to be cautious than to be stupid, in my eyes. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it just depends. For, for me, I didn't sign a prenup because I didn't have any assets to begin with. So it's like I had nothing to protect. <laughs> Anything we build will be together. So you can also sign post-nups, but that's generally because you're getting a divorce and you're making a contract that way on what each oh. person will have. But What's that do? Post-nup? Mm-hmm. I didn't even know that was a thing, to Esa- be honest. Essentially just tells how you're going to divide your assets because mm-hmm. that's after you've been married and you don't really think about having to divide your assets as a married couple unless you're divorcing. Right. You know? So that's when those are generally signed, but... Anyway, prenup agreement, definitely recommended. Jess, you're saying no because it's like a back door. Yeah, it just feels like I you're understand. going in with failure in mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that. Only only way it seems reasonable is if you had like a shit ton of money to start out with. Because so, that, that's when I feel like you'd end up getting like gold diggers or something weird. What would be, yeah, definitely. And what would be a an appropriate m- amount of assets to sign a prenup for, you think? More than I have, but I don't know. <laughs> 100K? I don't know. You'd want enough. Mm. I'd know, say something that couldn't be gained back very quickly. Like 100K would be hard. So like a milli? Probably around there, you would think. Because 100K would be hard, but if you already knew how to do it, it wouldn't be as hard. But a million's a lot more money. Well, I feel like it's the same concept, but you're right. It'd probably take more time, for sure. And it's got to depend on where you are in your life. Young and dumb. Like right now, it probably wouldn't matter that much. <laughs> yeah, probably not. But if it happened when you were like 50, kind of sucks. Yeah, you'd want to free up for sure. At that point, you'd probably both have assets that you want to sign prenups for. Mm-hmm. Probably. probably has and to do with And then you can just start fresh whose and build kids get money there. and shiz too. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, yeah. Prenups that have to do with that, yeah. I'm sure. Lots yeah. of things that I don't <clears> care <throat> to worry about right now. Mm hmm. Amen. So would tra- trademark infringement ca- count as asset protection? I feel like that would be like copywriting your like the yeah. Names. If you copy if you copyright things, then yeah, that's going to be your asset protection because then it's legally enforced. Yeah, you know, you get True. the law behind you, just like our logos copyrighted. Mm-hmm. So if we see anyone else using it, then we'll be like, hey, don't use that anymore. And then they'd be like, oh dang, okay. <laughs> I don't know. As that. long as or we, we made sure royalties. we were the first people to come up. <laughs> yeah. Well, if they if they use our logo, then we legally can collect royalties from it because we're we have the copyright to it. Mm-hmm. So we just say, hey, you can only use that if we get one percent or whatever, and then if that's agreeable to them, then they can use our logo. Yeah. Under those conditions. So. Yeah. Not a very. Pretty cool. I'd have to do more research into copyrights, though, for sure, to see exactly what our rights are, but that's that's as far as I know our rights are. <laughs> do we want to jump right into the business entities? Yeah, an LLC. Yeah. Do we, we want to? Let's see. Sole yeah. proprietor. Pro, how do you even say that? Sole proprietorships? proprietorships? Yeah. What the heck is that? 
general partnerships, limited partnerships, corporations, limited liability companies. Yes. Mm-hmm. C corps, S corps. Yeah. Fun mm-hmm. stuff. What do we want to start with? Just whatever. We'll start with a sole proprietorship. So it says here the sole. P- p- <laughs> it's such a hard word to say for me. I don't Pri-port. know why. Proprietorship. 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 Yep. Offer no limit <laughs> on personal liability. One mistake could cost you your home, depending on your your state. Okay, so that's not very good. So that's basically so just starting a business with no asset protection. Yeah. Basically. You're just going for it. Yeah. Sole proprietorship. Hmm. Hmm. Well, how would yeah, you do so that? Sole Is that proprietorship. You go apply for. Sole proprietorship. I doubt it. It, it would be like. It's got to be like starting a small business, right? And you're the only. Mm-hmm. You funded everything. Basically. Yep. So probably what majority of the etsy business people would have or uh-huh. yeah yeah they could probably do limited liability companies on that because you don't need you don't need more than one person for yeah. those but for an llc mm-hmm. yeah but how much does an llc cost a year probably depends I don't know what you're doing yearly cost i know it has like a one-time setup but it, it's oh, i thought be... i thought it would charge you monthly even if you're I just doing it rentals like that would be because bailey talked about this right so his dad set him up one when they were little and then kind mm-hmm. of oh, yeah. just left it? True. Yes. Just a one-time thing? 70 bucks to start an LLC in Utah. Oh, and then your annual, annual fee is $20. Okay. So that's not too bad. No, that's so cheap. And you have registered agent fees. How come I thought it was like 500 bucks? That's kind of what I thought, too. I don't oh, know. we haven't gotten into the business permits and licenses, the filing costs. So maybe probably <laughs> five hundred. Yeah, you're probably you're probably up there. You got to get a business identification number. Just oh yeah, yeah. Just go to. So what can you do if you don't want an LLC? Like you still want to make money. Probably look the sole also, proprietorship for uh, a general partnership, which is the same thing, but there's more people involved. With somebody else. Yeah. General partnership. So <laughs> let's let's break these down a little bit. Mm-hmm. So your limited liability company is like is essentially your like Jesus Christ, please help me. <laughs> 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 My brain just had a fart. It's LLC is essentially limited liability company is what it stands for, and you it limits your liability because you. Uh, even as the owner or an owner of an LLC, cannot have somebody sue your company and get to your personal assets through your company, from what I understand. Yeah, that's they limit your liability. So basically, yeah. it would go like your company would get wrecked and before you did. Right. Yeah. They can't access your assets, but they can so access only... your company's assets. Mm-hmm. Basically, separates the company from the person. Okay. So like. I don't know, the CEO, if this company got sued, they couldn't get to the CEO stuff, right? Right, they can't access his personal things. Yeah, but they yeah. can get to the business, I think. So it separates the business from the person. Yeah, it's just because these companies are legal entities under the law. They just can't vote. They've got all the rights of individuals except for they can't vote, Okay. from what I understand. so they, um, Or at least a lot of the rights of an individual, you know, you're not going to have a company needing to bear arms or anything (laughs) because it's just an idea but legally it has all the rights of an individual what would you do if you were trying to like just make a a deal with somebody say like yo i'm gonna use this piece of you know your idea and i'm gonna give you like five percent of sales just like a contract right Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's a general contract yeah so you would have a you would have your llc or corporation or whatever talking to his llc or if it's just a person and his sole proprietorship, whatever, and then you just create a contract that says that. Okay. And then you record all that under your taxes and write offs, things like that. My question is is like could you do that without getting like a legal document? Could you just write it up and have them sign it and then take it into the court? I bet if you, you could if you can make a contract, yeah. Yeah. Because contract doesn't have to be 
Yeah, I didn't think I had like to Like a go lawyer through. or nothing. You just probably easier to get out of without a lawyer. True. Yeah. You just write it up. Just write up a contract, and they've got pre-written contracts everywhere. You just write up a contract and then have them sign it, have you sign it, do the deal, and then if they default on their end, go to the courts and get it taken care of that way. But just make sure you are t- keeping track of all that for tax taxes. Purposes. Yep. Exactly. So if your LLC fails, um, your liabilities would go away, and wouldn't your debt theoretically go away too? Yeah, it should it's only belong company. to the – the LLC and not to you. Mm-hmm. Right. Very interesting. Yeah. Business so like, debt. So like if you got a credit card under your business and then your business went under, you wouldn't have to, you'd still have to pay the debt. Um, The company would have to pay the debt. Like I think technically the company could file for bankruptcy, the LLC, and then you would be fine. But it wouldn't hurt your credit at all. I don't. Not as far as I know. And it depends what kind of bankruptcy you file for. These big companies file for bankruptcy every few years. On purpose? And consolidate their, I don't know if it's on purpose, but they consolidate a lot of their debt. Every few years, you'll hear these big companies, you know? Oh, yeah. Like your, I don't remember if Macy's did it recently or not, the clothing store, but I think they did. I have no clue. Um, But they'll, yeah, you'll hear these big companies file for bankruptcy every few years, and... And you're like, oh, they're going to disappear. And then they just close some stores, open some other ones, like mm-hmm. consolidate and move some numbers around. Yep, exactly. Yeah, they did file for bankruptcy in May. What yeah. Um, and yet their company's doing great. Their yeah. stocks went way up, you know. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. still got positive revenue. Everything is just like, dang. So they filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And that means it allows a company to continue to operate while it recognizes or reorganizes without retribution from unpaid creditors. So, whatever that means. So, people can't come co- collect debt while they're, like, figuring yeah. their shit out, basically. That's that what it sounds like. Yeah. 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 AC Interbank Corporation. Seems a little, Seems not a little good. sus. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, that's <laughs> sus as hell little broken there it's like yeah. playing a trap card so uh, you can't collect any debts right now yes may of last year they went down to four dollars a share from 18 dollars a share and they're back up to 17 dollars a share now Dang. so they're not doing bad so is buying <laughs> stocks of a company that files for like chapter 11 bankruptcy since that's all public is that something that's worth buying into and seeing mm, not necessarily or is that you're playing a very so sketchy risky. game yeah. yeah the fact that they are filing for bankruptcy is <laughs> it's not a good sign <laughs> no <laughs> yeah necessarily because you don't hear you don't hear of like walmart filing for bankruptcy or target or anything like that you know that's the right. ones that are at costco because yeah. they don't need to but these ones that are Going out? So, yeah, sort of going out, but just need to consolidate some stuff. We'll file for bankruptcy, yeah. So, very interesting. Very interesting. It's just like all the all the airports and stuff getting bailed out. Well, they're government-owned. All the airports, airlines, everything, they're all government-owned, unionized. It's... Mm-hmm. So like south southwest and uh, west. All <laughs> the, <laughs> southwestern, <laughs> yeah. southwest and mm-hmm. delta. Yeah, they are they are private companies, but it's all government owned because it's all airspace. It's all. Do you have to join a union? Yes. No. When you, are you gonna have to? I might have to. Ooh. Yeah, I just learned this the other day. I'm like, Ugh. damn it. I'm no, what what is that gonna do for you? Unions suck. They take your money every month. <laughs> Do Some they? of them I don't know about an airline, but, but it does. But what they were formed for is to better help the individual, and so like because of the unions, there's some of them. I think no matter what, I'll get paid as if I fly like 75 hours a month, mm-hmm. even if I don't fly at all. So that'll be like your salary, you know, and then I get really good 401k benefits and I get insurance and all that stuff. So it's gonna be interesting. But, um, yeah, I'll play it out, let you guys know as I get into it more. <laughs> so if I, if I wanted to shoot a rocket up into space, do I have to get permits for that? I think so. Yeah. Why? Depends how high it goes. Why? Well, it's 
tell me how you're going to get access to a rocket. Yeah, well, no, rocket? like just if you built one. Like, say, oh, uh, so say I just wanted to yeah. build a rocket in, at my house and just fly it into space. You'd probably have to get so many permits. But why? Why is that illegal? You don't want to hit. They probably don't. Because it's U.S. airspace. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Then they so want to make sure you're not going to hit any planes or something stupid or something's yep. flying around you and mm-hmm. all sorts of jazz. Is there even laws against it though? Theoretically, because no, there's laws against it. drones if you go over 400 feet high. But we're getting a little off topic here. <laughs> I just had a question since you knew. Yeah. You knew about airspace. So I actually had uh, some experience with this the other day. There was a space that they set aside out by Wendover for rocket launching. Um, the other day, and so I couldn't fly in that space. Okay. Yeah. So it's a safety thing, basically. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I mean, you're not going to be getting that high with those tiny little rockets anyway, but if you're launching something halfway decent, then, yeah, you're going to want permits or at least contact someone so they can block it off around that area, you know? Right. Yep. So. Yeah, so Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk definitely have permits. <laughs> yeah. Or had, whatever. Well, yeah, they've got, they'll put around, or they'll put out things around the space launching facilities when you're, when they're launching and then you just don't fly that, don't fly around there. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between a corporation and like a LLC? Um, basically, so a corporation, so shareholders and investors, they get to, uh, basically get to choose who's on the board, like who gets, like... I think it's I couldn't really find who all goes on a board but I think it was like the CEO and uh COO and all that they get to choose those and they vote on stuff like that and then uh an LLC you don't get to do that it's just whatever you don't have a board of directors yeah mm-hmm. well, I'm just wondering if it's like a amount of money you're making type thing to where if like um cuz Walmart isn't Walmart a corporation I think so. Walmart yeah. would be a corporation. So they've got a board from, of directors and everything. From mm-hmm. what I had seen, I mean, to me, this is what it sounded like, is that corporations were older than LLCs. Okay. So, like, a corporation, and then they had the S, it's a C corporation, which allowed the shareholders and blah, 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 and the S corporation, which is the same thing, but you have, there's more stringent rules, and you have to, uh, but you get special uh, tax benefits or something. But an LLC was basically taking the best part of so both of those, and then... <laughs> So you still get tax benefits. Still get the tax benefits, but you don't have to do the board of directors. You can be a sole owner, all that jazz. Okay. So basically, you get more for less. And to me, it sounded like they used the cor- C Corporation and the S Corporation for a while and then kind of just ditched it and went to a, or combined them and went to LLCs. From what I understand, the corporations are used by larger businesses too. That's what I'm yeah, saying. It's probably like for going public or something. You'd probably want a corporation. Because, mm-hmm. like, like, an LLC likely aren't going to have... Those are, like, the mom-and-pop businesses. Right, but what if you're, you did have a business with an LLC that got huge? I'm sure there's you ways can, to switch it over to a corporation. Yeah. But why would you? That's my question. Probably for shareholders so you can have and a board of directors. Yeah, board of directors and shareholders. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, like, your shareholders not. have some say or whatever. Okay. Yep, because you're not going to want... You're not going to want to run that business forever. No. And that's what you'd be doing in an LLC. If you're the That's that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Right there. You're the owner, you're the you're you ultimately everything. responsible versus corporation. You have the board of directors who keeps the company afloat and has shares in the company and so they get rich with the company. Okay. Yeah. So a corporation is basically just a group effort. <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah. it's just meant for large scale businesses yeah uh, whereas llc you can start it by yourself and not have to worry about it you don't need everybody else right and you can make multiple right llc's, LLC's? Yeah. yeah you can even put llc's inside llc's what? oh you'll learn about that in the book we'll be reading a book our next book we'll hmm. we're gonna talk about that next our next time. book is fake that's right. Yes. Technically, yes. Next and it, it, yeah, and it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, for the for the listeners, we're actually doing two podcasts tonight. So we're because uh, we got a couple of us going on vacation this next week. So it's kind of might be interesting for a second. <laughs> but 
Yep. We'll get you your podcast out. And then I think the one we didn't uh, – actually, we didn't go over a couple of them. We'll just go over general partnership real quick. Um, now, what's the difference between that and like an LLC? Uh, a general part – I think it's with LLP. no asset protection whatsoever. Or – Oh. It's yeah, just like if me and you was like, let's do it. So and that's – did it. That's, that's the bad one. So that's the one that you're going to be – that you were talking about where you're – you yourself are just making a contract with someone else. Mm-hmm. Please mm-hmm. just be a general. If you guys go in on the business, or you'll be your own general partnership making a contract with him. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, you, you would still be protected because of, if they wanted to be like, oh, no, you can't use it anymore, then you'd be like, well, no, you've got Ooh. your signature right here. Yeah, a you'd be protected by the contract. A general partnership, I, from what I understood, was that it's like you're both owning the company, not – you're p- paying to use okay. someone else's stuff. Okay. So, so it'd be uh, like all four of us currently, right now. So this all is four a of us own Infinity Summit Group technically, but it's yeah. We don't have good. any contracts set up that way, by the way. We don't really need them right now, but yeah, we haven't signed anything. Anyways, we'll set them up later if we need to. I think we're gonna do that when we decide to put an LLC on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Then we'll all you sign it. Idea. Be part of it. Yep. Cool. All right. And then the last thing we didn't cover for asset protection was a trust, wasn't it? Limit, limited partnership and a trust. Oh, limited liability partnership. That's right. Yeah. That's my bad. you want to take the reins on that one? Um, I think it, basically you're just supplying money. That's the gist of it. So um, you got someone so who's the actual owner. Yeah, and you're supplying money, but, but so – you're kind of a partner, but the reason you get like uh you have limited liability is you're you're giving the money but you get no say in day to day day to day operation. So you're not So you're not liable, liable for anything f- for anything, but you're still kinda there. I don't know. Yeah, so it's, it's what's known as a silent partnership as well. Yeah. So in exchange for limited liability, you have no say in how the business work goes. You're just paying for it. Mm. Mm-hmm. That would be the way to go if you're just giving someone money for their business. Like if if we were to throw money at for Bailey's yeah. Yeah. homes, um, we could either do the limited partnership or just do a contract and do it that way. Right. You know, probably wouldn't need a limited partnership for that if he, since he's flipping so fast. But if there's something you're doing long term where you're actually funding this business over a couple of years, then, yeah, you'll want that limited partnership status. And then, let's see, the last asset protection we'll talk about <clears throat> is a trust. Um, and basically, basically, there's two types of trusts. There's a revocable and an irrevocable trust. Um, the revocable trust is basically the person that gives the money to the company can get rid of a trust member or they can dissolve the trust. And then irrevocable is where you don't have any control of the trust after you've thrown money at it. Um, so question is, can you be, can you be sued and have, have people get to you through the trust or vice versa if you have a revocable trust? Uh, for the revocable, yes, right? And the irrevocable, no? I think revocable, yes, but kind of like a, I think like an LLC still. Like, hmm, how do I put this? So where it either stops at you or the trust, you can't get both. You can't get one through the other essentially. I think you'd just have a better chance of not getting them getting to you at all with irrevocable. Cuz with uh, the revocable, you still kind of control the account and what's going on inside of it. Yeah. And they can get to you through that, I guess. But if uh it's irrevocable and you have no control over the money, regardless, it's not. Yeah, it would have to provide some sort of protection though. Yeah, that's why I was saying maybe like an LLC. But like a uh, a corporation, like if in a corporation if you don't separate yourself from a company like fully, yeah. um they can do something called piercing the corporate veil, which means that they can sue you th- even though you have like a, a corporation because you're you're too intertwined with it, you're not a- acting as a separate entity from the company. Yeah, so if you're not running your own personal accounts um separate from your business accounts, then they can get to you through that. Yeah. So, like, when we do create an LLC, we'll have to have entirely separate bank accounts, everything for the Infinity Summit Group Okay. versus just going through one of us, you know? Right. 
which is what we've been doing. We've just kind of been playing with our stuff, but we don't have a company yet. So anyway, so in a revocable trust, your assets will not be protected from anyone looking to sue um, because you maintain ownership of the trust while you're alive, which makes sense. And so it doesn't, oof, yeah, so it doesn't, a revocable trust will not protect you, but an irrevocable trust will protect you. But what you can do is you have an irrevocable trust, give ownership to people that you know and trust, um, and then you're good to go. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so you you can, and you might be able to do a vice versa thing where you might own someone else's trust, but it's not your trust to own. You might have contracts in, intertwined in there. Um, but you can also, from what I understand, you can put LLCs inside of trusts as well. Hmm. So you've got two layers of protection there. Weird. Weird. What a whole life policy count is a asset that's protection? asset protection. Yeah, because you're protecting yourself, right? Everything that protects you from, like even say auto insurance, health insurance, mm-hmm. home insurance, the whole life policy. That's all asset protection. Yeah, okay. let's jump into insurance asset protection. Um, your so your whole life policy does not show up. It is a privately owned insurance, and so your your money isn't going to show up in the eyes of the government because it's like a it's like a Roth IRA, but not done through the government. So you've got after tax dollars in there. Any growth in there is tax free um, and then your whatever you put in there like paid up additions wise is after tax as well so that's all tax free growth and your death benefit is tax free but the government doesn't know about it because it's private so, it's so private could you asset protection yeah exactly it's private it's asset government. protection any insurance is private asset protection um, because they're all private companies that provide insurance could you put in your whole life in an LLC then? And like all of your... I don't know. I don't think... Would that even be protected? I, I don't Could you so. put your... Could you buy a whole life insurance policy on yourself through an LLC? I think would be... Probably. Yeah. Yeah, because then you're important to the LLC instead of putting your current one... Yeah, you can... Inside of an LLC. You can get... An as an LLC, you can get insurance on your employees. And if you're an employee of your LLC... Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you're an important asset to the LLC. Then yeah, insure your assets. Hmm. So there's ways about it that you could do it. Then could that count as your LLC? Theoretically, your whole life. I guess not uh, really. No, because you can't put. I mean, because it's not a business. It's, but you know, what you yeah. could do. F- now this is going to be where it gets interesting. Obviously, nothing is financial advice on this podcast, yes. but we just. You know, shoot the shit, have fun. Rolling. Yeah, talk about some, talk about some cool things that you can do in life. Um, doesn't mean any of it's advice. Yes. So what you can do, from what I understand, is create an LLC in and around yourself. Like you get a website to sell T-shirts or anything like that, and then and it's owned by you. Mm-hmm. And then anywhere you travel, any gas, any food, things like that, you can write off right. as taxes for your business. Because you run it from home, technically. Feels crooked. Uh, yeah. So I definitely wouldn't do that because, and I and I know of some people who can do that, but it just seems like the IRS would come sniffing really fast, you yeah. know, because the what the tax law says a lot of it is like, if it is incidental to business, if it is, if you spend... Like on a vacation, if you go down to Florida and you own property down there, if you spend 50% or more of your time looking at, talking about things like this, about your Florida properties that are in that LLC, then you can write it off as a business expense. Mm -hmm. So there's there's certain criteria for it, but there's a lot of gray area when it comes to tax write-offs and businesses. So that would be maybe like if we start an LLC for this. And then rented a house in St. George. And then that would be a down. business expense. Yeah. And we would be able to write off the taxes for the business. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But if we just went, what if we just went down there and like happened to be, all of us happened to be down there and we're doing a podcast. 
you could still write that, that off. If we're doing, if we're doing the right? podcast for the business, for the, yeah. would you count every, everybody's it's a separate trip. expenses, even though maybe initially it wasn't meant for that? Oh, you're saying if we happen to all be down there at the same time and then we do a podcast? Yeah, would you just, just kind of... I wouldn't be pay. bringing the podcasting equipment, though. Unless yeah, we but unless we like three of us were down there and someone else was like, actually, I'm coming down. I'm just... I think mm. you could because you're still doing it for the company. Yeah, if, I mean... Would you pay for everyone's is what I'm saying, or would you just pay for the single person bringing the equipment no. because everyone else was incidental? No, I don't know. It would be a gray area we'd have to look up for <laughs> yeah. sure. But it, it just depends. But all the... If you're if you're spending 50% or more of your time, or if that was the sole purpose of the trip, we'll say, then that's that's a rideable right. 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 Tax write off? Yeah. You're right offable? Yeah. I think you can even write off right food. Off. Yeah. Like going to yeah. restaurants. People yep. do that all the time. Everything. They separate the alcohol and then the food to a separate bill. Cause oh, like, really? Yeah. They're like, this we can write off on our taxes. We can't alcohol, write off the alcohol. Alcohol, you can't? Because, <laughs> well, like, what, what's that going to do for your business? <laughs> business plan. Yeah, nothing. Business plan. I guess that's one. I don't know. If I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I'm what, sure you could write off a business party. You've got to, or else they wouldn't throw those giant parties only if you like rent it somewhere or res- reserved it you can just go to a bar and call it a business party though no but yeah if you go to if you go to food and it's a business meeting i mean in all reality we spend enough through the infinity summit group even if we're not profitable at all where we could have um i mean yeah we could have write-offs tax credits how is every that? time we've gone out, it's for, like, a meeting to talk about things. Yeah. And all the money we spend on podcasting equipment, everything like that. And there's a lot of expenses that you can back tax um, for previous years and things like that. Mm-hmm. So, We'll definitely we'll dive into this way more on the tax podcast. Yeah. That will be later for well, sure. While we're right here, like, back taxes, would we be able to claim all of this? The All the equipment we've bought? Logan's computer, because I know he, you only use that for this, basically, right? But he didn't, he he didn't buy it with infin- Infinity Summit money. He bought it with mm. his own personal money. So we went right, but unless then he got refunded. You counted as a unless he got refunded by the business, then he wouldn't be able to claim it. Okay. So it would be some... You'd have to And all, all the money has been going through... Xavier. Uh, yeah, yeah, one of our accounts, and so we don't want that to be construed either. So if we were to create an LLC... What we'd have to do at that like point is just start from ground zero. Yeah, start from the yeah. original or and all this, bank account. And then what we'd have to do is if we were going to buy silver or anything like that in the future, then we'd just have to have it under business assets versus having so, it under our assets. Otherwise, that would get construed as well. Yes. Sure. If you did it that way and you bought silver for each of us individually, basically, would you just keep it? Where would you have to, would you have to keep that together? You could actually put it under gifts it? because we're all employed by our own LLC probably. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, I just don't know. I just don't know how that would work um, as a tax write-off, or if you could t- uh, write off a gift. I can't imagine that you wouldn't be able to. Yeah, or a bonus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm sure there'd be some way to do that, um, but we'd still, you'd still have to do. I don't know. I don't know if you could count it as a loss for the company because you're technically giving it out to your employees. I think it can. But all the other expenses that aren't assets, I'm sure you could. I bet you'd be able to. We'd have to look it up. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> We'd have to do some serious now. research before messing with the laws. Research. That's all I'm going to say. To a ta- talk to a tax person. Yeah, CPA. <laughs> yeah. And that, that would be our biggest expense to start with is talking to a CPA and seeing what we can actually do with it. Do we yeah. know anybody that does taxes? Um, we can talk. We know a guy. Yeah. I think Ping. <laughs> I know there's some Asian dude that my dad then went to start their LLC. I think his name oh, is Ping okay. or something. <laughs> okay. I know my dad knows a guy, too, that he goes through um, yeah. for his stuff. But Yeah. There's yeah. ways. We could figure it there's out. There's always ways. But with that, let's see. Speaking of, I met the VP of Fidelity over the weekend. Did you? Vice yeah, President. It's uh, What's that? Lynette's brother. What? That's cool. It's a big investing company, I think. Huge investing firm. Really? Yeah, that's where Johnny ended up moving all of his stuff over to Fidelity because Robinhood wasn't. Robinhood was being lame. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. It was get him, did you get his number? Get him on the podcast? That'd be wild. That'd be sick. Are you kidding me? 
I didn't know. It was it was awkward over there. Is yeah. that even an option? Oh, I'm sure it is. Lynette would give us whatever. I think we should absolutely get that done. That would be insane. Yeah, we have the vice president of fidelity on today. That would be crazy. We'd have to know a lot more shit to even give any value to him. Or That's what I want. He's giving the value whole purpose to us. No, I want our guests to have us. some value. Or, yeah, I want our guests to get some value, too. Being in the presence of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. Yeah, we're a blessing. <laughs> Heck, yeah. Fidelity. They're hiring, by the way. <laughs> Fidelity? Yeah. They probably pay pretty good, too. Um, As an I didn't really ask because we were leaving. But Depends on the position. Sure. Whoa. Also, he doesn't live in Utah, I don't think. Oh, okay. Oh. Nice. Makes it a little more complicated. Yeah. They manage $10.4 trillion. Yeah, Fidelity's huge. Holy shit. That's yeah. crazy. So that would be cool. We need to do that. Yeah, that would be way cool. Uh, that would be one way to just get huge, but anyway. Baby steps. Yeah. <laughs> baby step, baby step. One large step <laughs> for mankind. <laughs> it says All right. his salary is 164 grand a year. Nice. That doesn't seem like very much for a company that controls $10 trillion. Oh, I'm sure there's... I'm, I'm, there's that's his Jordan's salary. That's more. that's not his stock benefits, yeah. his insurance benefits, right, right. 401ks, any other investment a uh, assets they probably give him. Yeah. Right. That is cool. I mean, just like, what was it? Um, what's his name? Owner of Facebook. He doesn't, have a, he, he doesn't have a large salary either. Neither does no. Bezos. Bezos is like 1.6 million. Yeah, and um, that, Zuckerberg what, was even smaller. It was like... That's what people don't understand. They think that they just have liquid. billions yeah. just yeah, available. No. It's like... You no, that's no all. Clue. That's all their company stock from companies yeah. they built. And they yep. can't just pull that out of their ass. Which are corporations, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, any other asset protection we can think of while we're here? Um, kind of a quick podcast, but there's yeah, um, not much to say on this. This is and yeah. by the way, there's different asset protection in different countries. Um, this is all specific to the U.S. And there's more than just this. Yes, it's just what we found. Yeah, this is the easy to find things that you're going to use most often. Um, and then we already talked about insurance against all your assets and liabilities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, should be good. Um, we'll see you guys next week. We'll be having Callista, Callista on. Yes. Yep. Uh, she'll be talking about her Etsy shop. At least that's the that's the hope. And then we'll talk about the book Fake mm-hmm. by Robert Kiyosaki. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe. Check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. If you're already on there, great. Leave us a review if you care to. Give us some good feedback. And by good feedback, I mean good or bad feedback. We love it all. And then uh, make sure to check out our website, www.infinitysummitgroup.com, and check out our merch tab. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Peace out.